No, it's going to be, I don't know how they please the hop. That's what I'm waiting to see. I don't know how you do that in Tennessee being a run-heavy team. Did bring up some other guests. I want to give them an opportunity to speak. We have West Coast Cowboy in the building. West Coast, you got your hand raised. What you got for us? Hey, man, appreciate you guys for giving me an opportunity to speak. Um, when I look at you guys know I'm not the biggest guy on fantasy. So, you know, I'm using this year. I'm, I'm allowing, you know, um, PC to kind of like guide me through my first like real fantasy football season. So this is going to definitely be an experience. But just talking as far as football, what I would like to hope for D Hop is kind of like the effect that Dez had when when DeMarco Murray went crazy. Like in that same year, you know, my boy Dez had almost over 1,300 yards. If I'm not mistaken, my dude had like 16 touchdowns. And the reason why I believe that is because the run game, it creates so many play action opportunities. And more importantly, man, I'm going to tell you, a defense, what they're most afraid of is a running back toting that ball and banging them on the inside. So if you have to commit an extra man in the box, that's what you're going to do. And that it, within itself is going to create more one-on-one -on -one opportunities. So in my opinion, I think D. Hopkins' season is going to be more or less based on the, the, the corners that he sees because he's going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one action if, the, if Tennessee is able to run the ball better. And if you think about it, that's really been the, the history of the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys, we, we try to run the ball effectively. Then we, have, then, those, then we take the shots and take the opportunities, and we just trust our big receiver on the outside to beat your, your corner one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, Dez was able to do that a bunch. CD's been able to do that a bunch. And I think, you know, if you look at Tennessee, D. Hopkins is still talented enough. I would think in a 17-game season, I would think he would be better than I would think like 12 of the number one corners that he's going to play against. So with that, I, if I was a betting man and if the Tennessee does run the ball well, I would think he, I would think he would have a good season. Like, I mean, that's what receivers have done in Dallas and it's worked out for us. So I, I would think he's going to have a good Absolutely. season. Absolutely. You know, I got a question for you then, West Coast. Like, you know, that's a great take, you know, and um, I understand everything that you're saying, but, you know, those Tannehill and, and Willis is not Romo, you know, not Romo. Romo was very smart, you know, and, um, you know, and um, I don't see that from Tannehill. I mean, no disrespect. I don't mean that to Willis. Um, and I actually think the rookie going to come in and perform. I'm going to predict he's going to end up being a starter before the year is over. I, I want to totally throw that out there. there. You, I, yeah, I want to throw that out there. And, um I think he's going to perform better than a lot of people think. But, um, yeah, like, talk about the quarterback. So, so Wes, so, okay, like. Well, my, 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 thoughts, on, my thoughts on the quarterback is this, right? There have been – there's I, I feel there are elite quarterbacks, and I also think that there are – not quarterbacks, receivers. I think there are two types of receivers. I think there's a receiver that makes his quarterback better, and then I think there are receivers who are made better by their quarterback. Now, I think guys like Amari Cooper – you know, who had multiple different quarterbacks last year who were still productive. Guys like Tariq Hill who had multiple quarterbacks and was still productive. And I think a guy like DeAndre Hopkins, Des, I think you kind of, I think you kind of, you know, alley-oop me on this point because you you spoke really highly about the fact that he has had mediocre um, quarterbacks in his career, but we still know him as D Hop. So I would lean to think that D Hop is in that usher, that upper echelon of quarterbacks, where it's like he can still be very much productive regardless of the quarterback that's there, because unfortunately he's had to do that in his career. I mean, I think the scary situation we would like to that I think that you know a, a real football fan would like to see is what would D Hop do if he was with an Aaron Rodgers or if he was with a you know. You know I got to throw my boy in there. A Dak Prescott. You know what I'm saying? Like, what would he do if he was with one of these quarterbacks that we are all, you know, you know, that we all look at as great quarterbacks? Now, you guys know I'm just being facetious when I say Dak. You know, I'm a homer, but that's my boy, so I'm always throwing him a little up. But, you know, that's the, the point is I think his career has been kind of riddled with that where – he has always had to be the guy to help the quarterback. Like he was a, I don't, I can't even, I don't even remember who his quarterback was in Houston. I know it wasn't um, Deshaun Watson that long. So no, it's it, like it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't. But I'm just, I, you know, it, I don't know, man. I don't know. Tannehill, they, Tannehill, they, they don't pass the ball enough for me. <laughs> I agree with you on that, Dad.